tell us to be able to monitor that in your own time so that you have the opportunity to sit down and listen to track that fluency at a much faster pace without waiting for that transition. So we're gonna look at that together today. So again, Tina Macias Papo, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining us at Ready, Tech, Go. I am joined today first by Juan Arieta. Juan is a colleague on my team full of wisdom. So, so happy that he's here to support me today. And in a moment, I have a special guest. I'll introduce you to her as well. So thanks for joining us. All right, let's get to the good stuff. I just told you who I was, that's me, <laughs> all right? Been teaching over 20 years. I've taught students, adults, GED, ESOL. I have endorsements in K through 12 reading as well as ESOL. And I have a master's in education and teacher leadership. So I really geek out on this stuff. So when you see me this excited, those who know me, it's legit. I really do love what we do. So I'm glad that you're here with me today and we can grow together. Let's look at the vision and mission of my department. In the ed tech and design department, as we also uh, sponsor extended learning, so after school programs and summer school and all of that, our vision is that every student will engage in their local and global communities as emotionally intelligent citizens, creators, critical thinkers, and collaborators. And our mission is to empower all teachers and students with quality learning experiences and seamless access. I love that seamless access. We're gonna tap into that today. To digital and physical resources, fostering student-driven real world learning. So welcome to the 21st century, right? The pandemic's kind of given us some tools we didn't have before. So we're gonna take it and run with it. Let's talk about our norms today in Zoom. Please actively participate. I do have several spots in our presentation today where I'm gonna ask you to show me some hands or type some things in some certain spaces. So if you could actively participate, that would be so appreciated. And if you're comfortable showing your camera, it's awesome to see your face. It's motivating and encouraging for adults just like it is for scholars. So if you're willing, go ahead and turn those cameras on. Feel free to unmute or type in the chat any questions or comments that you have. And Juan will pause me and say, hey, we've got a question. Do be prepared, we're gonna move fast. 45 minutes is not a lot of time for good deep learning. So understand that we're gonna touch on Cami in regards to how to use it, how to design, but our focus is really gonna be on how to use it specifically for progress monitoring that reading fluency. Please mute your microphones when you're not speaking. And chat of comments will be addressed as quickly as possible. Chat, looks like I found this, a spelling error and nobody caught for me either. All right, so here we go. Our T-test alignment today, you can look towards that planning dimension 1.2 uh, for data and assessment. Using Cami in this way will allow you to use formal and informal methods to measure your students' progress. So we'll look at that together today. Our objectives, participants will be able to connect to Cami and review resources on how to prepare a PDF. They will build with the split and merge tool in Cami, share Cami reading fluency lessons with students and see how Cami can assess and track reading fluency for you as well. <clears throat> but before I do, I said that I had a special guest I wanted to introduce. So I am gonna introduce, you'll notice I've done a district spotlight here. It was actually these two most excellent teachers from Hawthorne Academy that inspired the creation of this PD because they were doing it. So let me, without further ado, introduce to you Ms. Rose Maldonado, an outstanding fourth grade teacher from Hawthorne. Uh, Rose, please go ahead and say hi. Hi, I'm uh, Rose Maldonado. I have been working in the fourth grade for two years at Hawthorne Academy, but I've been with the district for eight. And I'm super excited to share the success that me and Ms. Cardente had this year doing the reading fluency. I, without a question, I am sure that at some point you'll see Ana Cardente around the district as well. Both of these ladies really embrace technology and utilize it to leverage growth for their students and keep them engaged. So Rose, thank you so much, because genuinely the two of you did inspire this PD because I thought to myself, that is a brilliant use of this tool. It saves an enormous amount of time for practitioners and I wanna be able to share that good news with them. So Rose is gonna join me throughout the presentation as we work through. So let's talk preparation real quick. First things first, I wanna make sure that we can get everybody um, into Cami and and see what's going on with that. So I'm gonna ask for you, if you would please, 
go ahead and show me by opening up your camera and using your hands, what's your level of experience with Cami? How many times have you used it? You're going to show me one finger. I've never used Cami. Two fingers. I've used Cami about one to four times, maybe, or three fingers. I use Cami fairly regularly and maybe perhaps like more than five times. What numbers are y'all seeing there? Because all of a sudden I've lost my ability to view everybody. <laughs> I have a few teachers who are saying one and I have um, quite a few that are showing three. Okay, excellent. That's good news. One, so if so you've never used Camine, if you feel at all stuck or delayed in the process today, I want you to just pause that process. We'll make sure we get with you to fill in any holes as we move forward, forward rather quickly. Awesome to see so many of you are already using Cami. That's definitely going to allow us to get moving with some speed today. So thank you for that excellent piece of information. Oh, battery low. I guess I better plug in, huh? My bad, y'all. All right, here we go. So now it's your turn. So you're going to notice that if you're within the SAISD district, that you can log into Cami using your class link. And uh, Rose, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and share that link now to our Cami. As soon as you've gotten logged into Cami, you're gonna actually join us in Cami for our lesson today. So those of you that are in the district, if you've never logged into Cami using class link, you're gonna have to add the app inside of your class link area. And for those of you that have previously connected, you are on track already to get exactly where we need for you to be. So you're in good space. Rose has dropped the link to our Cami inside of the chat. So everybody can click on that. As it asks you to log in, you're going to use your credentials from SAID. By credentials, I mean your full email and your password. You'll notice as I'm going through, I'm just kind of modeling how it's asking me to authorize in Google and how I'm selecting my SAISD account and I'm working my way through. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started moving forward. And so if you'll notice now, I've gotten myself over to the part of the presentation that says preparation, your turn. That's exactly where we are now. On the right side of this slide, you'll notice there's a link, how to connect to Cami. So if you're just joining us, or if you feel a little bit stuck, or you feel like I need to take this a little more slowly, I've never logged into Canby before, no problem at all. You have access to that link there. You'll be able to come back around and do that um, at a better time for you, just so that we can honor our short time of 45 minutes together. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. And again, if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and drop into the chat. First things first, I'm gonna introduce you to Cami and how we can use it for reading fluency with a quick video. Yeah. strategies and progress monitoring are an important part of instructional practice. Wouldn't it be great to have a progress monitoring tool for reading fluency that could help save time while engaging learners? Enter Cami, a progress monitoring for teachers, students, and families. Combine your standard fluency monitoring tool, whatever you're using now, with Cami's video recorder and audio comment. Model fluency strategies and fluent reading. Build schema, access prior knowledge. Engage students with a daily recorded reading of fluency word lists or passages. Encourage self-monitoring with built-in opportunities for growth and a record of improvement and reflection. Assign daily reading at home to students 
allowing families to encourage participation and celebrate growth. Or create time in the school day for daily fluency practice. Perhaps station location. Watch self-efficacy grow. Build a community of learners and families supporting one another in their education. Save administrative and teaching time by completing assessments simultaneously and scoring at your convenience. Have more time for student data tracking and ownership. Create the conditions for fluency success and have artifacts for data collection at everyone's fingertips. Tammy holds progress monitoring of using fluency. Access, accommodate, engage, monitor, feedback, relevant. Right. So that gives you kind of an overview of what we're looking at today and how you can use Cami as a progress monitoring tool. And it allows you the opportunity to work with your students as well as encourage them to possibly work at home. All right, Miss Rose, I believe that one's you. Yes. So I want now we want you to think about it. Um, how might students benefit from using Cami this way? The way I want you to respond is to use any of the Cami um, comment tools on the left-hand side. You're just going to click on comments and then click anywhere in this um, on this page and you'll see it pop up on the left side. So you should be able to record yourself or um, do a video recording. So go ahead and take a, uh, about 30 seconds and see if you're able to make a comment on the side of the Cami. If you prefer to use a text box, you're welcome to do so. I'd love to see you jump in there now and give it give it a shot. In case you've never used this tool before, after you click on perhaps the comment in the video, you'll just click on a spot on the slide and then it will allow you to go through the process of using your video recorder. Go ahead and allow permissions. If you're in SAISD, we have really tight security. Most of the time it's fair to say you wouldn't even be allowed to do something to harm your machine. Hi, Kayla. I'll give you about one more minute of exploration. Remember, we're answering how might students benefit from using Cami this way? So we can comment. You'll notice there's a voice comment, a video comment. This one even allows you to capture your screen. Or of course, you can head over to the text box, click inside of the slide. And if there's anybody who was unable to get connected but has an excellent idea about how students can benefit using Cami this way, feel free to unmute and share out. What are you thinking? Talk to me, teachers. What's on your mind? Love it. Give students choice. And more another willing great to answer. Thing, another great thing I noticed when students are allowed to record themselves, it gave them an opportunity to listen back to what they recorded and to make those adjustments the next time they were able to record themselves. I heard you say self-monitoring. Yes, ma'am. Build self-confidence. Differentiation, absolutely. Students with accommodations would benefit for sure. Love it, love it. Students can use voice typing, that's right. So this tool really helps to benefit any student, a student in general education, an exceptional student, an emergent English speaker, emergent bilinguals, multilingual students. This really gives the opportunity to meet what they need. And someone said, I like Cami because it's so easy to annotate. I agree. It really does uh, lean well with these tools across the bottom. So students benefit in all of these ways. And I'm gonna move forward. Thank you so much for your contributions. Your voice matters, teachers. I wanna hear you today. So some of the things that might not have been said is that helps with their listening skills, their speaking skills, and of course, technology. Um, 
And I think everyone else already said everything, but there's a key focus for today's lesson. It's data tracking. How can we use Kami to help build data tracking and make it easier and have give student access to it? Excellent. Thank you. So let's look at our objectives today. Hey, guess what? You met your first one already. You've connected to Cami and reviewed resources on how to prepare a PDF. So I actually put that in there. Um, some teachers aren't sure how to use a PDF. So if you're the teacher who says, you know, I've been doing reading fluency with this most excellent resource for some time, and all I have are paper copies, that's no problem. You can use your Rico printer on your campus to scan it to create a PDF and then you can use it. So we're gonna, with this, if you're a person who needs that PDF information, maybe you don't know how to make a PDF from a document, like a Google Doc or a Word Doc, or maybe you're unsure of how to save your Savas fluency uh, into a PDF. If you need help with that, at the end, we we'll actually have a link for you so that you can see how to create PDFs from a variety of ways. So we've met our first objective today. Let's see what's next. Building in Kami with a split and merge tool. This is key for um, creating the, the actual, your craft, what the teachers can input with um, using slides and then using your resources or P, your PDF from Zabas. You combine those two to make really, really good interactive student-friendly lessons that they're able to complete on their own. So you'll notice that we said we're not going to dig too deeply on actually how to use Cami. That's a different PD, which our department does offer in either an e-course or live for you. So if you want some follow-up with that, we'll give you that EdTech tech link a little bit later as well. We're going to watch a quick video for the split and merge tool, just so that you understand how to use it. But please keep one thing in mind before I start the video. You can use a singular document as well. So if you already have a PDF that's done, you can just pull it right out of your drive and use it. But if the tools that you want to use are in more than one location, multiple resources, we're gonna show you how to use the split and merge tool to bring them together. And you'll see on these slides as you have the presentation that the first slide will give you a link to some visual aids so you can see how to use the split and merge tool for my visual learners. And for those of you that prefer step-by-step -step directions, they're here across these two slides. And now we're gonna jump into the quick video so you can see what the split and merge tool is all about. Separate, join, and reorder pages or entire documents with Cami Split and Merge tool. You can access the Split and Merge tool from the starting screen on Cami or opening the hamburger menu from the top right corner of the menu bar. You can bring in as many documents as you'd like from Google Drive or your device. Once your documents are in, select the pages you want to move and drag to their new location. It could be in the document by placing them on a different row or in the same document, but in a different order. Select several pages at the same time by holding the control key on Windows or the command key on Mac. You can add a new document by clicking the plus icon on the bottom right of your screen. After you've arranged the documents the way you want them, you can rename them and export them. Save it back to your computer, export it to your Google Drive, or open it within Cami. Was there anyone, are you able to hear that audio? My partner just told me he could not hear the audio. Change the speaker. It's very low. Yes. Okay. It's just low, huh? All right. Well, we were right there at, towards the end. I'm going to put it back. I think I'm maxed out on my volume here, but I can turn it up just a pinch. Let me try again. Sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. With Cami Split and Merge tool, you can access the Split and Merge tool from the starting screen on Cami or opening the hamburger menu on the top right corner of the menu bar. Still not better. You can bring in as many documents as you'd like. Well, since the volume is really low, 
and it doesn't seem to be doing any better. I'm going to stop. No need playing a video we can't hear, right? So what I'm going to do is just a really quick overview. Using Kami, you can take multiple documents to create a new document. You can rearrange the order of the document that you have. So in a practical application for this tool, here's what I'm thinking. Let's say you go to your tool, Fontis and Pinnell, you go to Savas, whatever you use, and you go to that spot where all of your fluency trackers are. You can download the whole entire thing, but you're thinking, man, that's 42 pages. I don't need 42 pages, no problem. Once you've created that individual document, you'll be able to excerpt only the pages that you need as you create separate assignments. So this is why that split and merge tool holds great value for us in this regard. Any questions about the split and merge tool? So normally if we had an hour, this would be a time where I would have you go and explore with the split and merge tool. But instead we're gonna move forward to make sure we cover all of the material. And then as we've covered all of the material, then we'll come back to the opportunity for build time, okay? So in addition to using that split and merge tool, remember that's a part of preparation. So now you're at that stage of, I know what resources I want to use and I've brought them into Kami already. I have selected exactly the fluency materials that I need. So now it's time to package and edit your lesson just a little bit. So when you edit a lesson in Kami, it's most excellent because you can bring in direct Google Slides. You can directly bring in a PDF, documents, any of those things you've already created. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And then you're just gonna pull those materials in and do a little editing to make sure you've included directions. So perhaps for your primary students, that might be Rebus directions, you know, where you just see the picture that shows them exactly what buttons they need to click or includes an image for them. It might be a text or as the teacher, you can also include video or audio instructions. You can drop in a timer. In the examples you're gonna to see today, you'll notice there's a timer on one of them so that students can directly time their one minute of reading their fluency with a timer already in that space. No need to go link out, no need to set a separate timer, everything in one location for you and for your students. If you want to use the same fluency practice for every day, you can create a singular lesson and then the students can just keep returning to it. Or you can do something like add a break slide to show your days of the week. We'll show you what that looks like in a minute. You can edit the student access features. So if everybody, if I can get your attention to the left side of your screen, all of these different features in Kami are there right now. But did you know that when you create a lesson, you can remove some of those? So since this is a fluency lesson, I might choose as the teacher when I'm building to completely remove the drawing shapes, the eraser, and only leave out these tools for markup, comment, or the text box. That way you're reducing the visual um, stimulation for your students and just allowing the tools to be present that you need. You can include questions, and you can also, of course, as we mentioned before, all of those fabulous accommodations where you can put in audio, video, and visual cues to meet the needs of your diverse populations. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a peek at what this looks like for each of them. So what I'm gonna do is set a four minute timer and I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and click on each of these links so that you can see four examples, actually three, I'll model with the first one first so you can see what that looks like. Make sure you go up to the top and select that selector tool. The arrow should make you think about like a mouse. You're going to select that so that you can click on the link. Uh-oh. They were working. And any, is anyone else able to click the links? Oh. All right. Well, in that case, we're going to make another change. It was working. Rose and I did it the other day. Let me double check on it. Oh, wow, they're not. To the, uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So here's what I'm gonna do. Thank you teachers for your patience. I'm gonna come over to this presentation that I know the link's working in and we're gonna go ahead and look at them together. That way we still have the opportunity to look. 
So in this example, you'll notice on the right side, this introduction, Rose actually made this. Rose, do you wanna to explain to them about the first read and how you use that tool? Um, yes, so what I did on every time I started a reading fluency is I read it first because if you leave for Cami to read it, it has that robot kind of feel. So you can, so they'll be able to hear it as many times as they need to in order to be able to practice it correctly. So you'll notice here on the side, Rose did that first read so that they can listen. This is also extremely helpful for your students when they are unable to identify a word. And you'll notice she even went as far as in this case, she wanted to ask some questions. And so she read the questions aloud. Now, again, yes, Cammie totally does that for them, but she wanted to uh, do it in her own voice. So if we can remember those assistive technology tools are priceless. We love them. We want to use them. But anytime they hear your voice or see your face, they're a little more motivated. So she did that. So that's one way that teacher read aloud, how we can introduce the fluency. And now this is what a single day lesson using Cami for reading fluency might look like. We've included an anchor chart. There's some directions on the right side. Ms. Cardenti, uh, Rose's partner in work, and there she's got those reading fluency instructions. So remember how I said to package and edit to make it what you want it to be? This is precisely what I meant. It's been edited. It's not just the fluency passage, but it also gives instructions, can include sentence stems, and allows those clear, explicit instruction so that they even know where it is they should be recording. That's what a single day looks like. <clears throat> and that's that editing piece that we referred to. Oh, okay, what's your question? Well, those tools stay there. Like the student won't be able to delete those on the side of their recording. Thank you, Rose. All right, so those tools are there for them. The tools won't be deleted, um, but again, remember when you design the lesson in Cami, you can select which tools you want to show, okay? All right, so this is an example of an entire week. Now you'll notice this time, remember I mentioned giving Rebus instructions? This is what I meant, offering pictures for your scholars. These are just snippets I took right off of my Dell. I have the same laptop most of you have. And so those help them to understand what buttons to push. This is what I mean when I say embedding a timer. You can see the timers there. And then these other images are because sometimes we can use fluency in a station where they can work with partners. Now, something else we didn't mention, we're just gonna drop in. I can leave a video comment about their fluency. You can see that as a teacher, you can also leave an audio comment. So as they go through there, there's their instructions. I've read those aloud. And now I want my students to actually use this very same assignment all week long. So they know, hey, it's Monday and here's my fluency and they're gonna get to work. And then guess what? It's Tuesday. Hey, there's my fluency. It's the same one, right? But I'm just separating it by days so that each of my students can use a singular assignment for the entire week that for me as an educator, that's a one and done. I've completed their lesson for that one day in one space and they know they need to return to it day after day. But for students who need more digestible chunks, remember you can represent these one day at a time like that first model that we showed. Okay, instructions are there. And then you'll notice I've added something else here too. So remember, we're talking about data tracking, right? We've talked about student autonomy and independence and motivation, how using this tool is going to increase their ability to use Cami and motivate them to do so. You can also include reflections. So when I say conquered words, the first time they heard me read aloud that fluency, maybe there were four words they didn't know and they knew they needed to practice them. So they've jotted those down at some point throughout the week and really practice on those words. So then when they come to the end of the week, they can say, hey, I can read the word purpose now. And they can monitor their own growth and of course be motivated because they see their progress. And then finally, you could also choose to to do this just for practice with partners in a fluency station. So as you make your literacy rotations, it might look a little something like this. Perhaps in a station rotation, you'll notice the directions are given. 
they're reminded about what it means to be a fluent reader, and then they can open up the book. Okay. I don't know what's up with that. So you, you're given the directions. So they fully understand what to do. This was put inside of Canvas. We've got that read aloud piece there still. Questions are still read aloud for them, but now they can do the work that's assigned to them within their station. So it's just one more way that we can utilize this. So remember, you can do this by including a teacher read aloud, make it a single day assignment, create it for the whole week, or you can make some station work with partners or independent station work as well. Any questions about what you saw there thus far? Any questions? How are we doing? So again, if we were in person and we had this whole hour and not 45 minutes, we would get moving right now, editing and packaging our lesson by including instructions, including your reflections, maybe a common graphic organizer. However you choose to design your workflow, you can include it in there. And then Rose is gonna tell you about how to save this to your drive. Um, the easiest way when you're done packaging, putting it together, you're either gonna hit the export button and save it like that. But once you're done like adding your recordings, just on the top right hand, hit the save button. And I like saving mine to my Google Drive it makes it easier for upload in either whatever learning management system you're going to use, whether it's Canvas or Google Classroom. Um, and just be sure to save it in a folder that is easily found. Th those are my takeaways. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. No for sure, we want you to save it to your drive because remember your Google Drive is accessible anywhere because it lives in the cloud. So if your device breaks and you need to borrow one or you need to grab a student Chromebook or you need to get an iPad or even do something on your phone, right? It happens sometimes. If it's saved in your drive, you can do that. And it will uh, easily head on, uh, be accessible to you no matter where you are. So in quick review, we're at our second objective. We've built with the split and merge tool. And now we're gonna see two ways very quickly that we can share this lesson. We previewed one, it's our favorite way. Go ahead, uh, Rose. Save it, I mean, upload it in Canvas. It makes an individual copy for each student. So that way you can communicate with them and easily grade it. And to integrate it into Canvas, those step-by-step -step visuals and uh, narrated instructions are here for you, as well as a video how. I know we're lot, we like to learn in different ways. So within this, you can see, again, you've got some visual instructions, exactly what you need to do. You can read those instructions, and then you can watch them in that video. Embedding in Canvas, she mentioned it's easy to grade. So when you integrate a product like Cami into Canvas, it becomes an assignment inside of Canvas. That means you can use speed grader. That means you don't need to open all of your separate student files of this Cami, that you can just go right down that speed grader list. Tremendous time saver, and also gives you an opportunity to communicate with feedback with your students. Now, if you're not a user of Canvas, maybe you are a primary grade and you use Seesaw. No problem, Seesaw is its own level of learning management system. You can include a QR code, which you can get directly from Cami or you can get a link directly from Cami, and then you can drop it into the Seesaw for your students and they can access it that way as well. So that's how we'll assign and share a lesson. So we know how to connect to Cami, build with the split and merge tool, share Cami fluency lessons with students in multiple ways. Now let's take a peek at that data tracking in our last seven minutes of our session together. So how do you track reading fluency? I'm going to ask you to unmute and share aloud. What tool are you using right now? Feel free to talk out. What tool are you using right now in Cami for reading, uh, I mean, for reading fluency? Um, I ask my co-teacher the, their map data. I also track them with their previous star data. But because of the COVID, some of the star data came from when they are fifth grade and jump to the eighth grade. Um, I also check the, their score on the I station. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. Anybody using Fontis and Pinnell or Raz Kids, maybe some LLI or Jan Richardson or Savas, if you're using that district material provided for you. 
If you're using any of those, you'll notice that many of them by looking on the bottom of this page have their own trackers for fluency. You might design a spreadsheet and maybe you have to do it in a shared drive or something with Excel or sheets with your campus. But any of these tools, here's what's great. You can also put those in Cami for yourself and just add all of it there. If you wanna keep it on paper because it feels good to you that way, go ahead and do that too. But because you can grade so quickly using this tool, it makes it easy for you to track your data and better still, our students can track their data as well, and you can drop that right into Cami for them. So remember, when students are seeing their own growth and they're tracking their own data, we have loads of research that tells us that when kids understand the purpose behind what they're doing and watch themselves grow, that it's motivational for them. It also allows for them to establish goals so that they can very specifically target what it is they need to work on. And again, this tool allows you two together to have a conversation inside of Cami that includes feedback so that you can say, hey, I noticed this, your student can work on it and then comment back to you, hey, I worked on this today. And by the end of the week, they'll really be able to notice, hey, there were five words I couldn't read in this fluency passage on Monday, but it's Friday and I'm getting scored today. And today I can read all five words. So we can use this tool for data tracking to increase our success. So looky there, we've seen all of our objectives. We've connected to Cami, built with our split and merge tool, know how to share Cami with students and then see how Cami can access and track reading. If you're not sure about any digital trackers, I've led you right back to that slide that shows some examples. There are many ways in which you can use digital trackers for your students. And if you're more interested in those, of course, you can always check out Google University, right? But you can reach out to the EdTech and Design Department as well. We might be able to help. And in addition, the reading resources and tools that you already have most assuredly have some level of data tracking for your students too. So here at the end, we've got some resources for you. Here's that whole presentation in Google Slides so that you can have access to that. And these are those teacher created, those examples I showed you of the different ways you might build your reading fluency inside of Cami came straight out of this powerful fourth grade team. And I've seen in other, other classrooms that they have begun to do the same. Also, Cami has an impressive website with great videos as well as their YouTube channel. Most of their videos are two minutes or less and they're titled specifically, so it's a really helpful tool. And then of course, right here, you can leave your email and a question in this last space if there's any further support that you need. For example, hey, Tina, we need an ed tech IS to come and train us on Cami at my school. Let us know. Uh, the ed tech and design department can provide pr professional development for you. We also have Cami in our e-portal. If you don't know, we have self-paced trainings. You can spend five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, do it all at once. It's totally up to your pace and your decision. And so we can provide that kind of support with you. If you don't know where to find fluency resources inside of ClassLink, we've got you there as well. So you can drop in your email now, feel free, drop it in the chat, drop it in the Cami, wherever you'd like. We'll have access to that. And here's that contact information for ed tech and design. And way back at the beginning of the presentation was my personal contact. It'd be my pleasure to help you out. And here we go. That very last slide, I mentioned the PDF. There it is for you in case you need it. Okay. How to prepare a PDF. And that's it for us today. We have officially used our 43 minutes. I'm proud of us to get all the way through this lesson. Questions, comments, thoughts. Teachers, your voice matters way more than mine today. So let me stop and give you a chance. Ask questions, speak up. What can I do for you? Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm looking in the chat and I see those emails of folks who said, hey, reach out, I need a little support. I gotcha. The sign-in sheet has been posted in the chat. 
And I also posted the um, the slides, the presentation, because the link wasn't working in Cami. What's up with that, Rose? What happened to I you? don't know. Usually when you upload from a slides into Cami, everything, all the links work. So I'm right? not quite sure what happened. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened either, but at least we know. Thank you all for joining us. No questions for me? I know it's a ton of information, but good stuff. Ms. Gilbert, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, does this work in Google, uh, in Google Classroom? It does. Okay. So you, you. Can, you can integrate with Google Classroom as well. Thank you so much. All right, our time is up. Looks to me like friends are starting to arrive for the next session. Again